Whilst listening to 78 RPM records from the 1930s and 40s, the listener may be forgiven for assuming that the distorted, crackling sound emanating from the shellac discs was the result of substandard recording equipment and that the microphones involved must have been rudimentary and of poor quality. Here is one such example from the 1930s, the STC 4021E omnidirectional moving coil dynamic microphone. The following digital recording has been made with no EQ or processing, fully exposing the shocking truth about this weird looking elderly transducer. Originally designed and manufactured in America by Western Electric and marketed as the 630A, it was nicknamed the 8-Ball after the number 8 pool ball, which is also spherical and black. In England, the STC 4021 was manufactured by Standard Telephones and Cables Limited, a subsidiary of Western Electric. It was used by the BBC from 1935 until the mid-50s and was more imaginatively known as the Apple and Biscuit. According to STC's brochure, the 4021 was designed to be suitable for high quality studio work and acoustical measurement. This frequency response graph shows a fairly uniform omnidirectional response from 30 Hz to around 10 kHz. It's interesting to notice that the flattest response appears to be at 180 degrees off-axis. The flat, porous Romano screen, i.e. the biscuit, effectively reflects sound onto the diaphragm from all angles. If a more directional response is required with a brighter high end, the Romano screen may be replaced with an acoustic baffle. The 4001B acoustic baffle is hard to find these days, but even without it, the 4021 responds well to the addition of high-end EQ. Over the last few decades, the 4021 has even found favour in major studios such as London's Abbey Road as a drum overhead and ambient mic, producing a fat, punchy sound with plenty of low-end weight. As demonstrated on these recordings, the STC 4021, in common with many other microphones of this period, is capable of quality reproduction that fits very well into a modern recording system. Indeed, in this age of razor-sharp digital audio, the lack of extreme high-end response may sometimes be seen as an asset. For instance, the unpleasant scraping noise often produced by close mic bowing on stringed instruments is subtly filtered by the natural roll-off from 10 kHz, often making it unnecessary to reach for the high-end EQ. The 4021 may no longer be anyone's choice of microphone for recording classical music. 
But in this next example, it is interesting to hear how it compares to a high quality modern condenser microphone, the AKG C414 BTL. More than 75 years after it first appeared, the STC-4021 remains a versatile recording tool with many interesting creative possibilities. And so, next time you find yourself listening to a crackling old 78 and bemoaning the poor quality sound, perhaps don't blame the microphone. It may not have been a complete banana, it might have been an apple and biscuit. <laughs>